we are back to work on the Curtis Midget. I like saying that. Uh, so we got everything in paint. Um, last update was a little while ago. We had a lot of other stuff going on, so we had to set this little dude aside. So, um, got it all in paint and everything like that. Got the hubs pressed on there. You'll notice there's no paint on this side because that's going to be pressed into the back of the wheels. So we went ahead and put the little pins into the axle for an axle to hold that in place. The rear, the rear axle here, um, it's a complicated arrangement. So we had the, uh, the the differential halves went together, sandwiched onto the uh, onto the rear axle tube, and then we have these gigantic pieces of chrome with a little nubbin right there. I still need to take care of uh, gigantic pieces of chrome on the back here, who have these little offshoots in the back that hold not only the spring but that little U shape area right there that holds the shock or the linkage for the shock. I guess I, I'm not quite sure how that's working. I think they have friction shocks on these on these older guys. And then up here in front, you'll see that these have a little bit of uh, an angle to them. Well, they don't have enough angle, uh, unfortunately. They uh, they splay out a little bit, but they're supposed to come in just a little bit more. And then those little guys are captured by this little U-shaped deal here. Now, I really do wish that this was actually just a hole uh, drilled into the, uh, or drilled or made into the frame rather than... Um, this u-shaped deal because that's just going to make mailing all that a lot easier you know perhaps that was neglected because of technology of the time when the mold was created i don't know but um i mean it's well within my wheelhouse to see um which way does that want to go let's put these in place this black on red is looking really good so I, i'm not able to go and capture the bottom of that without cutting into the belly pan oh, this camera uh so uh you know we'll make it work the best we can once with the belly pans on it'll probably be a lot easier to put that rear piece on uh we'll, we'll see how it goes because um it's kind of weird the uh because they glued the firewall in place uh i have to put the rear axle on and then the engine in and then put the belly pan on so i messed up my order of operation a little bit there also i want to paint the inside of the belly pan uh, a natural metal color. I thought that might be kind of cool. So like the inside of the belly pan and then the underside of, of the hood bit here and then um, anything else that might be uh, visible to the eye. That can stay black. I still need to mask this off and do the seat. And thank you all for such great, great tips and, and such about how this seat is supposed to go on here. We are looking for something that we can snip or nip or whatever and use as uh, snaps for the, cover, the seat covering att where it attaches to the body. Uh, that's going to really, just a little tiny deal like that, I really think is going to be uh, what's going to make it uh, next level type of stuff. So I thought about using, you know, I've got sheets of bare metal foil that are not really in great shape anymore. Not good for using, um, they're so old. I think that's older than a couple of my nephews. Uh, I don't think it'll be great for um, for doing window trim and stuff, but it might be good for... Uh, doing the inside of the belly pan. I'm not sure. We'll see how that goes. But uh, it could be more of a problem than I'm thinking it'll be. Uh, right here is our engine. We have the uh, distributor up on front there. And I thought this was a magneto, but I think this is actually just the way they do the distributors on these old flatheads. So there it is. And I believe that might be the coil right there. I'm not 100% certain, but we did go and drill out several of the holes, several, all the holes, and we have the spark plug holes drilled out, and this is the nice looking side. The other side looks like um, uh, Marty Goodman on the other side there, but uh, if you don't you understand that reference, then you'll know what I'm talking about. But uh, yeah, so far that's it. We have tires on wheels. Those look really good. I did a satin coat over the top of those, and I think that looks great. Here's the backside. Backsides, I don't know, backsides always look better. And then here's our nose. We haven't got the grill uh, glued in place yet, but we wanted to see how it was fitting and see if we had to do any sanding and stuff. And I do, I have to take down this lug a little bit right here. And then, yeah, so there we go. But right now, uh, oh, and I think, is this dry now? I have the photo etch fret for the uh, steering wheel center in place. Once I get my fingerprints off of that, <laughs> 
<laughs> got to do a little bit of a touch up up there but uh yeah i like that that looks great i like that photo etch on there it looks more scale size you know so just little tiny things here and there and then we'll figure out how to address that rear bit and then we'll be pressing on with more so we'll be back when we do also it is saturday and it is the mafia meeting night so uh i've been working at the bench here running around getting stuff ready for the house wanted to sit down this is a great way to get my heart rate down so i can calm down and just and just plow on with life there we go we're going handheld on this one um oh shoot that's not closed oh that could be bad so that moment when you got to use the glue bottle to help press everything together a couple of magnets to uh to help keep everything aligned and this is the jig we've kind of quickly created in order to get everything to line up and glue together so fingers crossed this actually works we'll come back in a little while hopefully the uh, cement will set up quickly and we'll check it well just a teeny little bit of progress has been made on the curtis midget midget uh let's see here so the engine we have those are the worst holes i have ever drilled for spark plugs um yeah um that's <laughs> oh my yeah so you know things just don't go well sometimes uh got a color on our distributor i wanted to go with that nice bakelite brown i thought that would be kind of a fun a fun color to put on there and now after doing some mock-up realize we'll never see it because it's going to be tucked underneath the radiator uh reservoir shroud um but everything's all glued together now and got the water pipe in there What's really strange is the instructions show us uh, attaching the water pipe and having the the inlet down here in the bottom of the oil pan and not actually going into the uh, supplied hole there. So I was like, All right, that's odd. Um, I, I, I went ahead and, and stuffed it into the supplied hole and it, lo and behold, it actually fits better than when I didn't have it in the hole. So um, it's, it's just a strange deal. But uh, got everything else sort of sort of painted up a little bit there. Got the uh, transmission there uh, painted up in a, in a metallic color. Uh, I thought it would be cool to have the uh, um, actual shift lever mechanism in sort of like a titanium gold color, just to give it a little bit of a differential in color. And yeah, so we're uh, we're looking pretty good on the engine, even though it's blurry. So there's that. And then. Um, we do have several of these little uh, clips all around the desk with some spark plug boots waiting for those to dry. We painted those rubber black. Got several of those. These are the 90 degree versions. Let's see if I have the paperwork here. Yeah, plug boots. This is the 90 degree ones. These are the uh, part numbers PTMC79. And then we're going to be using spark plug wire. This is part number one. <laughs> perfect and oh, the only color i have on hand I, I i always forget to buy spark plug wire the only color i have on hand is red so hopefully it shows up in the engine bay i'm looking i have some yellow i was using some yellow on another build and i need to go see if i can find i might have more yellow and if i do i'll use the yellow on there because that'll show up great underneath the uh the engine lid there but um did a little bit of an experimentation uh, I took a few, I, you know, like I said before, I have some really junky pieces of uh, bare metal foil and I just slapped them onto the bottom of the uh, of the pan there. And that doesn't look too bad. I kind of like how it's catching the light and stuff. So that's cool. Um, need to do a better job of making that look better. But, oh yeah, the, uh, the cowl sides. Um, yeah, I probably should have sanded those. But uh, actually, when these are in place... There's so much going on in there you won't see the uh the ejector pin marks but um i'm thinking that that'll look pretty cool and i'm thinking about actually doing the face or the face yeah i guess the, the face of the firewall in um in bare metal foil and then trying to figure out how to do an engine turning technique on there uh one last thing is we still need to mask off our seat that that you know seems like it should be a, a better an easier job than it's going to be but i was digging through my protect part stuff and i came upon this here this is the ptmc7 nuts and bolts there we go so some of these look a bit large but they might uh they might actually these, these smaller ones here i don't think i can get a gooder gooder a better view there we go 
these are like the bolt where the bolt sticks through and this is the bolt head of course so i'm wondering if we take some of these little guys and just stick them around the uh the seat and we'll wait, wait till we paint it of course actually i take that back maybe i'll put them on before i paint it and then just come back and, and then take the paint off the top of the little heads here that might be the way to do it so there that we'll, we'll give that a try and see how that looks um you'll be the first to know if that turns out well uh we also have a little bit of an issue with our carburetors these guys are they're not they actually look pretty good for the size they are but womp womp um so yeah that's you know it is what it is and you just saw the um my my ability at drilling the hole in um that says not too bad drilling holes in things so yeah it looks like it's got googly eyes in there uh, so you just saw my, my ability for that. So that's going to be a bit of a, a chore to try and drill that out. And I wish I'd done that before I painted it. But uh, I thought there was an air cleaner that went on top of these guys. And I was wrong. Um, I do have some Iceman carbs. And uh, these guys look really great. So I might actually just use these instead. Go with those little dudes. But because uh, they got like the little the little butterfly in there and everything and the little bit and they've got some really nice detail on the outside too. I mean I can't believe this is 3D printed, my goodness. But uh yeah, we'll we'll probably swap for those, see how it goes. But so far that's what we got going on. Sort of got the trailer together a little bit. I gotta uh figure out how I wanna bring out the uh the decking on here. Um I might I might use some more bare, bare metal foil over the top of that. We'll see how that goes. Who knows? But uh, there we go. We'll be uh, we'll back when we get a little bit more.